So good morning, February the 25th, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Light. Today is day number 10 in the week number 5. So let's get started. Thank you very much for coming back and good morning. Um, I have to appreciate very much that um, most of you have already done the uh, SFQ for learning contract number 1. So um, I just have to make sure the first thing I need to do is to walk you through the result and provide a little bit of my comment. And then I'm going to answer some of the questions I received at the end of the last class. And it's very important. Okay, now um, remember, um, I just introduced to you or remind you the whole group intended learning outcome for general education only at day one of this semester. I didn't talk about it. Indeed, um, when I answer this question, it is still the feedback questionnaire, and I ask you, do you agree that what we are doing are uh, very much consistent with those goals? Uh, the result is, you can see that I got three students who disagreed, uh, six of you say neutral, uh, four say I agree, one strong agree. Now remember, we have 21 students in this class, but we just got 14 responses. So the seven of you who did not do this questionnaire, I I would highly recommend that you make the best use of the chance to do something with the questionnaire because it's here I can read some of your mind. Alright, so basically I would say that um, actually I'm trying to make sure the course is steering uh, in the directions which could let you appreciate that what you're doing could help you in a sense uh, accomplish some of those important goals. Okay, remember these are stated uh, from the perspective of the students. So at the end of the general education program, students are able to, first of all, number one, understand and utilize subject-specific knowledge to engage with questions both contemporary and enduring. In the course of the first four weeks, I'm trying to give you some questions good enough for you to achieve this particular objective, but it could not be done in one step, all right? The second important outcome is students are supposed to be able to share ideas effectively. They're written and almost communications, both formally and informally, in the, pro in the process of using the forum, in the process of doing your peer based discussions in cloud. This is what I expect you to achieve. And then manage their own learning and development, including time management, organization of student life, not learning. Well, this you can see a little bit more in the context of your meeting minutes, in the context of your proposal, uh, and also in the context of self-regulated learning in a second learning contract, okay? Because you need to set goal. You need to make sure you have a, a good understanding of the timeline, and then learn how to communicate with your buddies. And then are able to demonstrate practical thinking and problem-solving skills. Um, in the context of looking into the way you organize the journal, uh, you have to follow the OIA process. And OIA is one example of critical thinking practices. So I hope that you can appreciate a little bit of the skills there. Now we've not come to the, uh, the big topic of problem solving skill yet. Although you need to problem solve in the sense of how to select a topic. But it's quite impressive, all right? And so demonstrate the ability to interpret and synthesize a range of information example. This is in the context of information literacy, when you have a number of sources uh, to dig out relevant information to the topic you choose. You have to, you have to have this ability. The interpret means to question into something, to synthesize, to evaluate that something, to understand what are important and put them together. Okay? Um, it's very important and definitely demonstrate personal responsibility to get your job done, demonstrate some social responsibility to help your peer partner to get the job done, demonstrate the ability to cite your sources based on the information you got. Uh, you need to have interpersonal competency to enable your partner and subsequently your team members to accept your ideas. And of course, in the process of doing that, when you come up here to share, you are sharing your ideas with a diverse community of students. And of course, um, you have to appreciate uh, what we are doing. Um, and of course, this is a little bit difficult. Um, I, I cannot say it's difficult, but it's a little bit more complicated. 
There are some ideas of intuitive learning, but in the context of this course, if you look at the syllabus, it's only towards the last four weeks of the semester that we come to the idea of IR, intuitive learning, which means putting things together in the context of your student portfolio. All right. Um, but here, we have to make sure that you appreciate that. Um, what you accomplish along the, the road of learning in this course, you have to keep track of and then put them together with a proper perspective. Well, of course, general and specialized study areas. It's, uh, here is a general education course, but we do have a course title for web technology and life. Okay, given this background, we can look at the result. Um, I would say it's quite acceptable. All right, so let's take a look at the second one. The second one said, do you agree that the learning experience so far in this general education course has been read consistently with the three important course learning objectives that I introduced to you at the beginning of the class, day one, to help students become literate in a fundamental understanding of the latest web technology, Web 2.0. You got that from uh, a specific explain Web 2.0 piece associated with the internet era, including impact in the data limit using modern data example, you've got, you've got a very inspiring access for its web technology making your life better. You have to go through some thinking, and in the process of doing that, you should have gather enough data for your own decisions making, okay? And the second one is to encourage you as a student to formulate to think a little bit more and put it in the perspectives so we can share with people, express the views on the design of web tools and applications in modern day society. Now, this is how I'm looking into this. Uh, when you write your uh, report uh, and also write your prop, have you ever used some examples today to demonstrate that you have some understanding of that? Uh, basically, I say, if you study any story, publish. Uh, did you study any written work plan of notes? Uh, did you study any presentations given by your fellow students or uh, some public presentations? And have you ever shared it in the classroom? Uh, that's the reason why you're given a chance every class to share in the class. Depends on something about this. Uh, but remember, these are written from the teacher's perspective. This is what I'm trying to see if you're doing something like this. And the purpose of this is to make sure I can raise your rabbits of the impact of different technology, including the web, on our daily living. And let's take a look at the result. Uh, I only got one student who disagreed, and four say neutral, seven agree, and two say strongly agree. That is a very good support on the directions we're going. Okay, but remember, we still have seven missing students who have not expressed their views yet. So it's very important that you participate in the survey. Now, this is a very tricky question, but uh, it's tricky in the sense that I've never mentioned this until really now on the second stage of the secondary contract. Uh, in this course, we have six possible course intended learning outcomes. These are means ability that could be demonstrated by students at the end of doing this course. And when you look at the six in, in, intended learning outcomes, intended, remember, it, it means I hope that this could be accomplished by you. And I Take a look at the evidence uh, of learning that you demonstrate, you, keep, uh, you, you manage to demonstrate in the your good economy. And it is this set of learning outcomes that we are actually bringing you together to demonstrate and do it in the second half of this semester. Well, I'm not that ambitious. I hope you can demonstrate at least two to three with six here. First of all, to conduct the scores in discussions, okay? Not over the data discussion, but something that it's intelligible is to tell something about your work behind sharing something. So that you can make sense of information technology in today's knowledge society. Is web technology making your life better if you can share that with your fellow students? In a sense, we can give example, we can tell the reason why uh, you did that uh, sharing. It's very much likely that you make it work already. The second one is to compare different web tools to perform research, engage in collaborations, and participate in communications. In today's class, we are going to help you understand a little bit more about this. And indeed, when you finish your first learning contract, you try the journal, you try the discussion forum, but you have not tried with it yet, which can help you to engage in collaborations. 
But you did the follow-ups already, uh, so you have brought back the verifications practices. But how are you going to compare this little tools? Do you know what each of these particular tools is for in the context of what the coupon is for? We have this little problems, very good uh, incarnations of all those tools put together. Uh, at least we try some, all right? We try some, the general, the forum discussion, okay? And number three, you will be able, as a student at the end of the, the, during this course, discuss and illustrate the use of what block, the blocks we're going really to talk about today, the block to keep, keep a learning journal. Now, um, in the first learning contract, we give you an electronic notebook or a journal, okay? And we also ask you to write a block, which you can use the tools on the right hand side of the Google environment called block entry, okay? So if you look at somewhere here, we do have something called drop entries here. All right, so look at that, drop menu. So I hope that I've not checked it yet. When you submit to drop in the first learning contract, you also have to add to drop here, okay? You add a new con uh, entries, you type the drop here, and then you submit to drop in the form of um, a publish the block and also copy the block into your Microsoft Word document so that you can uh, submit it like a piece of homework. Okay? So the second thing is the wiki, which we're going to introduce to you on uh, this week, today, and also next week. It's a kind of website you can actually use without the knowledge of the technical language of HTML to write something and allow your partner to write something in the context of project collaborations, okay, writing things together. And also you need to learn how to do photo taking and share the photo using the website. Um, but remember, uh, it's explicit sometimes the photo can be taken by someone else and used for some purposes you do not know. So it's much better for you to take some photos which is generic in nature. Uh, like the surroundings of the university or the surroundings of the town, and then you can share the photos. And social bookmarking is very useful in a sense. Uh, we will come to that. It's how you going to keep the bookmarks not just in one computer, but in the cloud, so that whatever computer you use, you will be able to access the same set of bookmarks. Remember, the purpose is to share resources over a number of participants. An RSS, very simple summary, okay, to access frequently updated content on the internet. So you will have a chance um, to learn something about this, and your responsibility is to demonstrate that you know how to do this, and you did it in your report, in your blog, in your discussion forum, and subsequently in your wiki. Uh, remember, your, your responsibility in this course is to learn and use those techniques to demonstrate that you have the ability to do this things, okay? And how are you going to demonstrate that? In your report, in your journal, in your discussion forum, in your wiki. Use social networking software to create a personal profile for specific purposes. I don't think we have difficulty doing that because all of you, I can't say all of you, most of you have Facebook account and if you have a Facebook account, you got that already. Share messages with your friend. You have on WhatsApp, you have WeChat, you know how to do that. John Network was school, John did a little network in particular for this course. John Network for some work purposes. Um, you have ever had an internship experience in companies where they require your virtual presence in a particular group every day. You have to report to a uh, certain virtual environment that have managed certain innovations over the sharing. This is something very common uh, in the context of Google environment when I give you a, a group space, uh, when you have a group form space, when you say anything, okay, it will be recorded and the group member and a member will be involved because of this, okay? So uh, differentiate, differentiate means you have the ability to distinguish one from the other. The application context of map attack, okay, the word method is very good. That to mean something about something else, okay? So it's the data about the data. For example, 
Now, in a school, you keep a set of your personal data, such as your name, your ID number, your address, your phone number. Those name, ID number, address, phone number is considered as metadata. A set of metadata is when you keep some data about a person and you put labels on such data, like you call tags. The labels such as your name, your ID, your address, your phone number. Okay? And tagging is the kind of categorizations, categorizations, actions dividing you into different categories. For example, your first year student, you call it freshman, year one. Your second year student, you call it sophomore. Okay? And for so many means, in a big term called classification, but the folks name to do it means it's a category based on the main people's um, you can say terminologies, wordings, okay? So, mesh up is basically a mixing of things together. Moodle is a very good example of mesh up. It put things together in such a way that it's called e-learning and problem. It makes the journal with the forum, with the wiki, with the chat room, or with the ability to see the video, to listen to the sound, to convert a lot of things, okay? Um, example like um, a mashup in the professional world, uh, often done by Google, as you can see later, is to create some customized application so that when you uh, shop somewhere online, you will have an experience that is it's very smooth or sometimes scary. How do they know this about me? All right. So the e-learning support about course management like Google. Let me tell you a secret. Okay, many students know this, but if you're not, you better be aware of this. When we use the Moodle environment to help you learn, okay, your activity in Moodle from day one to day end of the semester will be tracked. I basically have a statistic on when you access the Moodle environment, which resources I put there. And normally, I can see that. Okay, and this is the, the good things about the Google environment is for collecting learning analytics for students. In the past, in the classroom, only teachers with very hard working habit will be able to track the attendance of the students. Have you read a particular piece of resource? In the Google environment, if I would like to see if you've read a particular resource, I just pull up a page and take a look at your activity for the Google. There's no line, the system can track of that. So I know, tell me frankly, I know when we look at the students, the learning habit, I know how many times you access with them and to read the particular resources I put there. Normally, <laughs> when students come to this negotiate with us about how can I get a score like that, people will say, let's take a look at your analytic. You didn't study this, you didn't study that, you didn't study that. And then we say that that is a very interesting thing. Similarly speaking, when you go online using the free applications of Google, okay, they know what you're doing. They track what you're doing. If I go to Amazon to buy a book, they track what book I read online, how many times the visit the particular page. Then it's automatic. Now, here comes the issues of privacy. If people make the best use of such analytics to sell things to you, that is what the capitalist society is all about. If people make use of such analytic to create story to cheat you, that is ethical problem. We call it hacking in your privacy. All right. So it's very interesting. We got to be aware of that. Uh, E-business model. Uh, just giving you the Amazon's model, um, the learning model. So um, there is no denying that the facts are there. Um, that you didn't read the message. How can you be aware of things like this? So that is very interesting. You will have the, the chance to demonstrate that you are with different application contents the following things. All right? So work productively as a team. That is very much important in this course to give you a chance to not just study at home. At least you have a learning partner with you. And then from a learning partner, you have another peer in your team. Let's take a look at the result. I just got one student who disagreed. 
even though I have not actually talked about this in the beginning of the semester, look, looks like many of you have already sensed that. So I thought eight student degree and two strong degree with a three, consider that supporting this, it's very good uh, results. As a teacher, I use this as the basis to see if what we are doing is reasonable. So do you agree that this general education course is been granted according to the schedule? Scattered means that I scattered every the service. One disagree, seven agree, and two strong agree. So I thank you very much for that. Now, of course, we still have seven missing students. We did not do that, all right? So I hope that um, all of you will complete the questionnaire. Uh, there is a second one coming. Okay, do you agree that philosophy of UM's general education is suggested in the handbook? Um, Ten say agree, four say you just at least no disagree. Do you agree with the learning design as stated in our course syllabus introduced by the instructor? Learning design means as a, as, a, as a teacher, it is not so much I have to talk every day. I would so to them what you're doing here is going in a particular direction so that can help you learn to learn. I remember I got one plus three, nine three, and four neutral. It's a very encouraging sign. And then, which part of the syllabus have you studied suggested by the instructor? Part A, 11, part B, 7, part C, 4, part D, 2, part E, 3. Okay, now let me tell you that the school is heading in this direction. Officially, starting from 4, this 2016, we have to convert all our traditional teaching, um, teacher center teaching, to our based teaching, which is where the student center. This is the last semester in somewhere in between. Okay? This is the last semester somewhere in between. But I've been testing this for a number of semesters. But uh, if you come to um, audit for this course and study number four, you will see that I have a different picture for all of these. I will very much enhance this and put it at the very beginning. Alright? So far it's only B and E. The next semester things here will be at part A. All right, that is the rule for the university for us to enforce. Now, which part of the course syllabus do you find most difficult to understand? Look at that. Most students find this is complicated because this is very much different from the traditional approach. Okay, and uh, how are we going to organize a class in terms of different? Um, pieces of outer based teaching. Yesterday, right here in this room, the next bit from Hong Kong will tell us what they're doing in the poly, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And uh, this is very much consistent with what we're going to do, study with this form. Okay? So allow me to say this is understandable. Uh, most of you do not understand this. And because of that, uh, the expectations of the teacher, from the student's point of view, that we have to educate students about things like this, and that's why I started this. Uh, I start the semester to tell you the challenge for me is to help transition you from being a talk to learn student to a learn to learn student. That means when we use outcome based uh, teaching and learning or education, you have to understand your job in school is to make sure you become a learn to learn student, and that is quite different from the secondary schools context of teach you so as to make you understand. We teach you so that you know how to fist for your fist. Okay, remember, and before you know how to eat the fist, in the past we served you with the fist. Alright? So this is very important. And take a look at that. Have you studied general education handbook? If you did, um, do you agree that this could help you understand better our course learning design? Now this Three students um, do not agree after you study the e handbook. And I must tell you that uh, there's a little different from this edition of the G handbook from the previous two editions. Personally speaking, I love the first edition very much. Uh, it's very concise. The reasons why they do not be concise enough is because we are in the very last stage of revising the general education curriculum. And a lot of things will only be um, crystallize after the semester. So, if you there is something you don't understand, how how to make connection between the handbook and the syllabus, it's reasonable. 
but still, I think look at that. The, the fact that tells, those of you who study the head and try to connect with the set of study design, the number is still dropped. Okay? We're born in the neutral. We only have three <laughs> in support. But interestingly, three, three, and equal in this particular context. All right? So it's quite good in a sense. Uh, it's predictable, but it's being verified with this particular survey. Do you agree that having studied a proper sports syllabus, um, including course design philosophy, would help you understand better the data of the classroom? Uh, again, this time is a little bit different because it's very much away from the handbook, but very much on the syllabus. And what we got through was six versus three and five neutral. So that means we're still working in a positive direction. Um, do you agree that the proper course syllabus, including OBTL details that the design and present, help you understand better? When we talk about OBTL, the number dropped at this time. I'm still very much encouraged by 4.2. All right? So this is very interesting. Um, we need data to confirm the expectations. Do you agree with blended learning? That means we have face-to-face -face discussions in class, but when you left the classroom, we still have the Moodle environment, which was 24-7. It helped you understand the material. And let's take a look at the results. Uh, we have six students in the positive sign of one, not seven neutral. That means um, you still need to um, learn how to value the positive impact of the Moodle environment with respect to two types of teaching. Oh, yes. Um, the before class, during class, after class, and can do it actively. You can see a new picture, study next week. Do you agree that the weekly electronic resources, uh, this time is no doubt, you do find that the resources that I put over what are important resources, you can see that nine versus one, all right? So it's important that we do not keep the resources under the drawer, but put it open in the Moodle environment. Uh, do you agree that we can do a format? We have teachers talking, we have students sharing. Um, take a look at that nine, five, no one say no. Okay, that is very good. You love this um, important sharing. All right. So how do we do e-resources at the red? Okay, let's take a look at the results. Uh, I do not want to spend extra time here, but there's a very interesting story that we did not get to in Canada. Okay? And do you agree the G course and how you participate actively in class so far? Uh, that's what I love to, to read. Because most of you understand this course will give you a chance to participate actively in class. Okay? Um, do you agree that G, this G course could have to develop the independent learning in the related subject area? Let's take a look at this. No one say no. Okay, so this is a very important message I got to be that you support my steps to help you learn. Do you agree that the GE course can help you understand the related knowledge applications in everyday life situations? Take a look at the uh, result. Thank you very much. You support that. Do you agree that GE course can help you think critically about the related course subject? Again, the six versus one. All right, so thank you very much. Do you agree that GE course can help you develop communication skills? What are the communication skills in your present and future study? Again, I thank you very much after the first four weeks. Um, to the 14 students, two students who disagree. Okay, that is very important. And then, um, do you agree that the instructor that means you have to learn to learn? Here, I got five strong supporters. Thank you very much. We work hard to make sure that you will be convinced. Okay? So, um, which item below have you completed and submitted for learning contract number one? Uh, 11 of you did journal, 11 of you did the personal block, and uh, proposal 12, between the 10 and 9 and 9. As I told you already, um, our 21 students in this class, more than 15 students already finished the learning contract number one. Uh, this is a very interesting question. Six of you said you mastered the final five. Six of you said you did not. And I just advise you, whatever you do, not just in this course or in this assignment, 
you're not in the habit of measuring how much time you spend. If you don't do that, you will never know how efficient on the learner or effective learner you are because you can't spend all the time doing one thing. You must budget your time to do things. If you study our syllabus carefully, on day one I told you, read time management. We got a link on time management. And I invite you to spend not more than six hours per week in this course. Okay? Spend more, not more than six hours per week in this course. That means I expect the total number of hours you spend in the learning contract number one is not more than 24 hours. Now let's take a look at it. When I ask you how much time you spend per week in doing the first learning contract, uh, four say less than two hours, four say from two to four hours, five say four to six hours, and only one say more than six hours. Now that is per week, okay? And how many hours have you spent doing learning contract number one? Some would say four, some would say five, some would say six, some would say adult, some would say six, six, two, three. Okay? Alright, so and then the interesting thing is one student say, I just spent 10 minutes doing the first learning contract. This is incredible! Alright? 10 minutes for the whole learning contract. Okay. Alright, so 10 hours. I would say for the first learning contract, 10 hours, first of all, it's reasonable. And then, how many journals have you completed in the first period? I'm just testing on this. Eight say, only one with one journal. Four say, with two. Three, or five say, with three. And four say, with four. Now, we can tell if, how many journals you did, but when we look at these figures, we know that how many journals have chosen with journals to do. And then, um, from which, which journal have you chosen? Let's take a look at this. Three of you have chosen week one, two of you have chosen week two, seven from week three, and two from week four. Okay? That's very good. And we have to read this question's result with the first one, or with the 27th one. And this is the, just a sample of your, uh, the topic. Okay? And so I do not want to spend too much time here. But this is very interesting. This is a very, what we call, refractive question. Now we've gone through idea of the first learning contract based on your experience. Tell what are the core learning activities and idea is your experience and how since it is what. Basically, you just have to say that we need to do a journal, we need to do a discussion forum, we need to do a report, we need to do a blog, we need to do a proposal, we need to do many minutes, and the reasons of doing all of these include, okay? Um, I, I very much appreciate and I'd love to see you read some of those responses too. Okay? Because from this perspective, you can see how your fellow student understand idea. Okay? And of course, someone say no. Right? Um, that's okay. That's highly appreciate that. Alright? So, what did you like most about this course, the video? Uh, we can choose what we like to learn. Yes, freedom to choose is definitely it. More than adequate in this course because you do not have the freedom to choose. Um, you cannot make it work. Um, you see, I've yet to find um, an interesting thing. For me, it's very important that I have to establish an environment in this class where you feel comfortable to try. Okay? You do not have any fear to lose. That is my responsibility as a teacher. Learning environment. Comfortable environment is very important. Now, what do you think that needs to change? Um, I, I actually, I do not quite understand. Open more diversified classes. So, uh, maybe you want me to give you more choices. So, I'm trying to make sure I understand. They need some repetitive information, some useless information. Um, for me, everything I put on the website is going to be useful, except for that link, which over the time, because of YouTube's copyright, they will, they will, um, they will just report that this link is no longer active. Uh, I would definitely try to make sure we do not have any such things, okay? Uh, the layout is too complicated sometimes. Uh, offer me something simple so that I can incorporate your ideas into the other environment, okay? If you believe it's too complicated. You see, we have some limitations. The school provided a good environment for us. 
And because Moodle is an open source environment, it has certain format that we need to uh, use. If we want to change the format, we have to have the support from the school first. And because the school did not spend a lot of money here, and in our school, we have a team to do customizations. In this school, we just have two persons from ICQ maintaining the whole site. So sometimes it's, we just have to use it, okay? Um, if you believe that it's too complicated, you might suggest some supporting site, for example. Um, right here, we do have some supporting site, like, um, like the supporting site from your reading list, okay? I use the wiki site to support the book because the wiki here is free of charge, it's much more flexible. Um, some students have done good work uh, in the past semester. They create a very interesting wiki site and ask me if I can incorporate. I say, fine. Okay? So if you have some suggestions, make it simple. Create a simple site because I know many of you will be expert there and so to the whole class how we can help develop something simpler for the whole development. Okay? So definitely it's very important. Uh, not too many journal will be actually just need to do one journal for the web concept number one. Okay? But for the whole semester you have to make sure you, you finish doing ten journal to earn your learn to learn score. So if one journal for learning contract number one is too many, maybe you can suggest how to make it work. The journal is the starting point, okay? So do not misunderstand the requirement. Give me more video about security IT. You will find it later, okay? We subsequently provide them a video. And actually, the many videos already installed in the website, but it's distributed on different weeks for different topics, okay? But it's not difficult to find more video than IT. I've shown you later. Speeds, speed lower, that means slower, that means, okay, I try to do that. Content and method instructions. Um, you mean the content is not good. Okay, so you, you may want to give us a little bit more content for that course. Uh, if you could see the content provided, for this is not good. The method of instructions, as I told you, this class is a little bit different from the traditional class that the teacher is going to be the lecture here. The method of instruction is to help you have the experience to learn to learn. And when you have to learn to learn, you don't just listen, okay? You have to do something. So the method of instructions as I told you, the GE educational is to be quite different from the secondary school's approach, all right? Um, as I told you, that studying before this semester, the whole school is going to move on to our days, and you have to get used to learn to learn, because our senior management have already informed us, our students should rely on the teachers to learn something and talk to learn more than what's been changed in order to help you to grow up. This is a competitive world, okay? Individual works have been done more than second group work. Oh, very interesting. When each person, uh, when you do your learning contract number one, I would say at least 30 or 40% of the time, you have to do it alone. But up to 50 to 60% of the time, you have to discuss with your Peer member and a team member, make sure you understand the meaning of long socializations because you need to listen to someone's feedback. Um, independent learning does not mean individual work, it means you learn, you do something on your own, you try to test it out with sharing the information, and it's a process of um, research in, the, in today's world. Okay? Simplify and organize the content accordingly. Um, I try to make it simple because all the resources on the Moodle environment are not meant for you to do it all. You're given a chance to choose the topic based on the class discussion. So put the links over there just to make sure that you have clear indications of where to find something. Now, kindly show me how you can make it much more simple. But remember, we have the whole semester 14 weeks the team will go through and compare that with the syllabus and take a look at 
if we are doing the organization properly, um, make sure you understand the meaning of voting with materials in a way that, uh, that we are doing. For example, we are trying to make sure that on each week we have a theme, okay? And under the theme we have each day, and under the day we have a topic related to the theme. Now, I, I have to learn how to make it much more simple in all of that. Okay? Um, so because a lot of you are quite used to using a textbook. Uh, in this course, as I said, you are free to choose to buy a textbook or not to buy a textbook. Because most of the textbooks are here are already here. Learn and practice link. Alright? So the Buddha sign is an enriched sign in which I would like to create what we call a rich environment for active learning. R E A L. A rich environment for active learning must be supported with inductive resources, a clear chronological order, and a delineation of the topic, something like that. Alright? So it's very important that we go through things like that. Okay, now let's go back to the end of the uh, uh, the last questions. This is very important. Alright. I asked you what do you think the work knows so far and what you learned from an activity? Let's take a look at that. I got three persons saying so far I believe the work known is not reasonable and appropriate. I got four persons to say it's reasonable and appropriate and seven would not um, definitely make science yet. Now, that's the reason why um, we have to come to the mid-semester course survey, okay, the mid-semester course survey, which has to be done at the end of the first month of the semester. Okay, in the mid-semester course survey, uh, which is a very important course survey after the survey on a specific public assignment, uh, which is installed by the school, that we have to invite them to take. I set out four questions plus one important question, which is about the work done. Uh, actually, some students asked me already in the end of last class. Um, it's very important that we go through SRL and PBL as to learning contract. But some students express concern that only three weeks time to do SRL and another three weeks time to do PBL would be too rushed for us to create two sets of artifacts, one for FC002, the other for FC003, because that is due on March the 12th, and that is due on April the 2nd. So some students suggest, is it possible, which is very reasonable, to combine these two learning contracts together so that we do not need to submit the artifacts for FC002 on March the 12th, instead, only need to submit the artifact on April the second place. Now I let this open and let you answer this question. Okay? And we are going to take a look at the result next week. Okay? So that we'll give you back the feedback. Now everybody at the end of today, would you please come here to make sure we finish this five question questioning. This time I hope all of you will finish doing it. So that we can have some quick size review of the current status of this court. Okay? So having said that, remember to come back to finish this uh, questionnaire before the end of today. Okay, this is the questionnaire. You can come to do it here, okay, by clicking on this link on the right. Okay, I've set it to be closed by 11.55 today, but I'm going to make sure that you have at least one more. Day to do that. Okay, but if you, most of you have already finished it by the end of today, we can share the result to you through the announcement as soon as we send it in. Okay, so it's very important you participate in this meet the course survey. Okay, each one of you. So now may I just pass the time to the four speaker today. We used to have enough time to do this. Uh, five minutes per speaker. So in the first one, it's Okay, at this time I am going to make sure that uh, we go from top to the bottom, okay? Do not commit the same mistakes that I did last time. Jennifer, are you here? Are you ready? Okay, thank you. I pass you the time um, after reviewing the 
going to hunt your second one result and inviting you to complete a bit semester concert. And you can hold this microphone and hold it like this so that you can um, speak five minutes. Uh, all right. We need to find a research with convention to the internet, select our own within and then modify and so on. So we can say that information technology IT is the use of any computer storage, networking, and other physical device, infrastructure, and processes to create, process, store, secure, and return all form of electronic data. And from the academic perspective and academic context, the Association for Computing for Sharing Five IT has undergone great degree program that helps <coughs> students to meet the computer technology needs of business, government, healthcare, school, and other kinds of organizations. IT specialists assume responsibility for selecting hardware and software to use appropriate for an organization, integrating those products with organizational needs and infrastructure and historic costs, and maintaining those applications for the organization's computer user. But from the commercial and employment perspective, in a business context, the Information Technology Association of America has defined information technology as the study, design, development, application, implementation, support, or management of computer based information systems. The responsibility of those working in the field includes memory, administration, software development, and instruction and the planning and management of an organization technology life circle by which hardware and software are maintained, upgraded, and replaced. The business values of information technology lies in uh, a convention of business process, provision of information for decision making, connecting business with their customers, and the provision of productivity tools to increase efficiency. Sometimes the most people use IT as a commercial tool. IT is used in the context of enterprise operation as opposed to personal or entertainment technology. That is easy to find online. Business working are focused on the efficiency. So the information technology development is a great benefit to it. According to what we say about, we can see that IT is becoming the essential part of our life. Computer world's transmission is another kind of information technology. But I want to put forward a question is how to use IT more efficiently. Different people have different definitions of comprehension of it. But from my point of view, IT can divide into four parts. The first one is confer the information you need. There are many information in the internet world. Once you want to create a topic, you need to narrow the search spot, which demand you prefer to perform a more specific research. The second is find the information efficiency. For example, using the UN library databases, Google Scholar is a good choice which is easier to find more useful databases. What is more, look for a base citation. If you go to the whole article, you may find time. You need to find the topic centers of this paragraph. The last one is make practical application to where you need. Information technology is the choice of this generation. We should use the more efficiency in our study of business life. That is this one is wonderful place. And my presentation is finished. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs> um.
make sure at the end of your presentations, you will provide your little bit more details of what you said by going back to this link, edit it, and type of something that is your records to frame your score. So the second speaker today is Romina. Are you ready, Romina? Yeah. Thank you. Sir Vat gave us a problem to solve in five minutes. We would be using reflection in action because we would think on our feet and we would reflect on the issue to solve it right away. Um, when we come to a problem, we do this all the time. We use reflection on action all the time. Reflection in action means that you think on your feet because you reflect on the issue, like I said. This is a part of reflective learning. We need to do both reflection in action and reflection on action so that we may fully internalize and fully understand our lesson, or else it will be like passive learning. Passive learning? It's okay. Don't worry passive about learning is the opposite of reflective learning because we are just going to be passive. We're just going to accept everything that our teachers say. So uh, my observations are we always do reflection and action in some way when we're, when we're facing a problem. It doesn't have to be a big problem. It can be a small problem. But we're always going to be reflecting and thinking on what we need to do next. Um, my interpretations are, after we have reflected our exercise or dilemma, we remember it more and understand it more than we would if someone were to just always give us answers. And there's biological proof to this. I kind of forgot the explanation, but if we keep on thinking about that piece of information, the network in our brain, the neurons would grow stronger as we keep thinking of it and we'll remember it more. My interpretations are, oh, my applications are, I endeavor to practice more self-reflection or, or reflective learning as it sharpens my thinking skills, especially if I am thinking on the spot, like what I'm doing right here, so that I rem may remember what I have learned more. I thank you very much, Romina. Uh, Romina helped us to understand better the uh, episodes we watched in last class, what is refractive learning, and remember the questions I put forward to most of you. And the next speaker is Joanna. Joanna, we'd love to have you here today. And uh, we actually took away one chance of your sharing last time. And I thank you very much for your reminding us. So here is the microphone. Thank you very much. Um, my topic is similar to Ravina's, and I'll be explaining some similar points. Um, I'm also talking about the question that the professor gave us in last class, and he asked us if he was to give us like a problem to solve in five minutes, how would we use reflection in action or reflection? 
So from what I what I understand about these two uh, things and what is the difference between reflecting in action and reflection on action is like what I'm doing right now is basically reflection on action. So I'm thinking about some things that we did in last class. I'm thinking about the topic that we studied and I'm also talking about what I went through to be talking to you right now. So I took a preparation um, that was a long period of time to this reflection on action. But if it was something that was presented to me right away and that I had to solve right now, then I would be using reflection in action because I wouldn't have time to really think about all the things that I learned. So I would just quickly come up with an answer. I would be thinking really quickly. So it's a reflection in action. And I think, like Romina said, it's a skill. We have to know both these skills to be able to function because when we're doing public speaking or if we're just meeting people and, we wanna, and they ask us something, we use reflection in ask, action because we want to quickly come up with an answer. But if we're writing a paper or we're studying something or we make a project, then we're using reflection on action. So to recap, I would say reflection in action would be the process we would use to solve the five minute question and that would be thinking on our feet and doing quick response. Wellness to the book. Um, reflection on action would be focusing on our next steps and taking time to think back on some things we did before. So that's my sharing. Thank you very much, Joanna. Uh, another enhancement to the very important refractive learning. Okay, our last speaker today is Sheila. Sheila, which, are you ready? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sue. It's a very interesting. Um, it's a very interesting and very soothing experience to listen to three students elaborating on something so closely tied together, based on the topic of refractive learning. Yes, actually, in mostly the secondary school, we're so used to memorizations of the facts. And our purpose in exam is just to regurgitate most of these facts in order to make sure we come very close to the expectations of what the professor wants. But in the context of learning, we have to make sure we know why we are doing what we are doing. And so in this course, I try to design into the learning activity a lot of freedom to choose. Uh, but I have to provide material for you to choose. And so, uh, some of the time, I'm afraid that our uh, impressions goes into the professor didn't direct a lot. Um, so I think I'm trying to uh, give you a little bit more refractions now by coming back here. Um, let's say, have you ever come to this link on week number one? Okay, how to get the most out of your study? Now, if you have not come to this link and study a little bit about this very interesting video um, uh, which is given by this professor, a Chinese guy uh, and 
I, I hope you can pick up a lot of the things which will be a continuous story of today's sharing by the first students. Okay, we have to make sure that we let you go on time, so allow me to remind you one more time. This is a mid-term course survey. I expect each one of you is going to take because it contains a very important question of are we going to restructure the two learning contract by giving you six weeks time to do instead of two separate contracts with three wins followed by another three wins. In other words, you just need to do one submission on April the 2nd rather than two submissions, the first on March the 12th and the other on April the 2nd. But remember, this is an important course survey and we're going to continue with that next week of telling the results. So allow me to take attendance now. Okay. Now I'm going to send out a call for uh, participation for next week or sometime today. So make sure you sign up. Candy, are you here? Thank you. Neil, thank you. Annie, you're there, yes. Uh, Shen, thank you, you're back. Tom, thank you. Connie, thank you. And then Sean, Sean is not here today. Sean, oh, you're here, thank you. All right. Duda, thank you. All right. Uh, Jerry, thank you. Tammy, all right. Okay. Uh, Francis, thank you. Harden, Harden. Okay, I see that. I see that. Thank you. Joanna is here. Peter, thank you. Okay. Uh, Romina is here. Okay, Jennifer is here. And then Sheila is here. Laurie, thank you. Kathy, thank you. Okay, Alex, Alex, thank you. Ethan, thank you very much. Okay, how let's deal with the course of the learning by com completing the midterm course survey before the end of today. I will really extend it to the end of tomorrow, okay? So that um, you have at least two days time to do it. But the sooner you complete it, the sooner we're going to give you the result. All right? Thank you very much for coming back. If you have a question, you can stay and ask me. If you have any question, you're free to go. So that's it for today's CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. Until next week, stay tuned.